Hello everyone, I am super glad you decided to click on this video because I have a very special and impromptu video to bring you. I was currently in the process of making a different, much longer video when on yesterday, February 23rd, the new world update came out and with that update we acquired this very interesting looking aircraft. This is the de Havilland Canada Dash 4 Caribou. So it's a DHC-4. This was made, I believe, between Microsoft and Orbix. And you can find it on the Marketplace store inside of FlightSim for $14.99. Additionally, we are at the NZA Simulations Christchurch Airport, which also released today with the New World Update. And if that gives you any indication of what the New World Update is, it is New Zealand. And it takes roughly 15 gigabytes of your very valuable hard drive space. So the reason I'm making this video is for if you're on the fence about getting this airport or getting this aircraft or even downloading the update, I kind of wanted to give you a look at what you're getting. This won't be like a super in-depth review of any of the three. It's going to be a first flight for the aircraft for us. A very brief look at the airport just to kind of see what it looks like. And we're not even really going to leave the area, so I can't say much about the New Zealand update, but we'll see how it all meshes together. So with that, as long as we're in the outside view, we'll go ahead and take a walk around the aircraft and just get a look for how it looks on the outside. So we're going to come back over here to the captain's side wingtip and just look from here. We'll back up. And overall, once again, it is kind of an interesting looking aircraft. I did give us a tail number through the like aircraft customization page when you do your weight and balance and everything. We do have some weathering on the tail. We can also see some weathering here along the rivet lines, kind of on the wings and on the boots. And then we got these nice probes that stick off. We got these real nice radio antenna. Got some static wicks. Looks pretty good there. So if we zoom back in and take a closer look at the wings, we can see we that you can see where like some people have maybe touched it. Got some smears where it's clean through the weathering. Overall, looks pretty good, especially for a $14 aircraft. I do think in some spots it's a little hard on the weathering. I feel like it could have been lightened up a little bit, not look as dramatic. I think the texturing on the boots a little low resolution, but once again, for a $14 aircraft, I think we're doing very well. Coming up into the landing gear and the gear bay, we can take a look. It all looks pretty dirty in here. Pretty low res inside the bay, but most people aren't going to be sticking their heads in here. We got some nice dirt and grime actually on the gear. We can see that little knuckle there. Got dirt and grime here all around there. We've got, oh, oh man, I didn't want to hit that button. Well, sorry guys. Let's get back in here. And now we're going to be way too fast. Hit the center button on the keypad, and now we get to set everything back up again. Let's see, let's go about in 10. 10 will work. Okay. So coming back in here, we'll try not to hit the 5 key again. Well, we got some nice detailing on the landing gear. We can kind of see the brakes in there. Got decent looking tread on the tires. Got some dirt and grime. Everything looks pretty good. We can see weathering underneath our horizontal, stab horizontal stabilizer. Looks really good. Once again, more weathering right up there. We can see the scratches and just, I guess, dirt or age on the windshield. Got some more in the reflections. You can really get a nice view of all the probes and stuff hanging off the aircraft from here. Coming into the nose gear, everything looks really nice. The nose gear, I think, is done pretty well. Even got some mud and just dirt on the tires, because it, it is capable of off-field landings. The first officer side looks pretty similar, so we'll go ahead and kick it up to the roof and take a look at the aircraft from the top. We got really good reflections off the sun, which make it a little hard to look at right now. So coming in to here, we got some really good weathering on the exhaust. 
Got some nice dark stains there. You can kind of see the color in the metal change, which is a nice touch. And even a little bit of weathering there on the top of the aircraft. And then looking at the stabilizers. Once again, overall looks really nice. And you can also get a nice look at this little cargo terminal here in Christchurch. Really good modeling as well. And then now we'll go ahead and get zoomed in to the cabin where we can do the interior walkthrough. So we'll go ahead and kind of line this up and now we'll pop into the other view. And now we are inside of the caribou and we're going to do the inside walkthrough from butt to front. And we're standing here on the cargo ramp, as you can tell. Which we got this weird thing going on with the paint kit. Not sure why it looks like that, but it does. So now we'll walk forward into the aircraft. Which this is going to be a little bit of a slow moving process. So I'm going to come up here to about one or two more windows up. And then we'll turn around and take a look behind us. Because then we can talk about one of the issues I have with the interior. And we'll stop right about there. Go ahead, take a look behind us. And we got some great detailing here where the back door is. We can see all the nice ribs. Got good detailing around the walls of the metal of the aircraft. But then right here with the doors, I don't know what's going on with these emergency exits. I've never been inside of a caribou, but I just feel like we're missing a handle. I just feel like the inside of the door does not look like that. I'd almost believe it more if it was just green metal. Then I do think the insulation textures are very low res, but I won't I won't be spending a lot of time in this part of the aircraft. It is nice that we even have a decently modeled interior, especially in the $15 price range cuz what does that Captain Sim C130 cost for what has no cockpit? I think for 15 bucks, they did a good job on the inside. The only other criticism I have is if we look at the windows here. So we got this real nice red netting for the back of the chair. Looks good. But then where the windows are, you can see the red, just the color just kind of fades. And if you look at it from a side angle, like right there, there it is with the black and the red, or right here, just the netting. It's almost almost as if the window is actually placed on top of the netting which just looks odd but they'll probably fix that in an update we still get really good detailing out of the windows like we can see the hydraulic lines on the landing gear the landing gear is still very well modeled even from just looking inside of the aircraft and the fabric on the seats look good Honestly, the seatbelts look great. Can't criticize how those seatbelts look at all, but right here. Here we can't even see the window because this, this bench is folded up, but look at that. You can still see the window. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. And it moves as we move. So it's just as if they put this window texture, they didn't layer it right. Well, this aircraft's only been out for a couple hours, so I'm sure that's something that'll get fixed. Looking at the cots, we got really good texturing on these ratchet straps. The blankets look great. Can't complain about how those blankets look. And they even modeled a pillow in there. Uh, going through the cockpit, this is my third trip through it now. It's We've ran into some technical issues, so this is the third time I'm filming this video. I've yet to find any click spots in the cabin to operate doors or really do anything. So we really just have some nice modeling here inside the cabin. We do have really great texturing on the propeller, which is something I forgot to talk about on our exterior walk around. But on the propeller, we can actually see weathering. There's rust on the front here. We can actually read the propeller blades. You can actually get in there and kind of see the radial engine, which is all really nice. I think they did a great job with that. And especially at 15 bucks, I think there's some really great modeling and texturing here. This door does open and close, and it's got a great sound to it. Sounds really good. Cannot complain about how that door sounds one bit. Walking into the cockpit, I have not found anything clickable down here at eye level when you're walking through the cabin. But we do have some great modeling of just these 
I guess, old avionics. They look great. I really love the visuals on this aircraft, especially in the flight deck. The flight deck is very good visually. I can't complain. So as we go up the staircase, we can now see our circuit breakers. And s some of them do actually appear to work. It would... Oh, oh. This is going to drive me crazy. But this actually appears to work. I have not tested it in the game yet. But it does appear to be functioning circuit breakers, at least. And there are even some that say inoperative. Though I would assume it works. Now, the only way you can open and close this ramp is if we turn around get a sneak peek at the cockpit flip the battery master to on then right here on this control panel we have the cargo doors it should be off but then flip it to on open these up and now we can close the ramp in the door which take a listen to those sounds and they each have their own sound so right here's the ramp And then here's the door. Those sound amazing. I love the sound of those in this aircraft. It sounds phenomenal and I love it. And I love the fact that they both have their own sounds. Because I would assume in the rear in the real aircraft, they make different sounds. When the ramp is at the fully extended position this lights up green i forgot to talk about that so now we'll hit the magic f key to pop us into the pilot seat and from as far as i'm aware of clicking everywhere around this window i cannot get either of the windows to open it could just be i'm missing something if we look behind us this panel for the temperature controls is modeled very well we can actually change some things it looks really good the cockpit modeling, like right here with this texture on whatever kind of material that is, or with this seat, this seat belt, the furriness on the seat, just the the weathering and age of the yoke, or the weathering and age of the panel, it all looks really good. Those scratches on the glass even carry through. We can see where the glass is, I guess, different pieces of glass. And overall, the cockpit looks really awesome. And... This, oh my gosh, that's going to drive me insane. Uh, the inside of this looks really well. We can even see the propeller there. I apologize for that. I don't know what's going on with my internet. I have two different internets. One cellular base and one is like a direct line. I'm not going to, I'm not going to name drop any companies, but the other is like your standard, I guess, cable. It's not fiber optic because I live out in the country. It's a whole 20 megabits a second. But it's a direct connection, and I don't know if it's something to do with the weather out here, because when I went to the grocery store, it was negative 24. I don't know what's going on, but the last two days, I've been plagued with internet issues, and when my next video comes out, you will see that, because I'm not going to refilm those three legs. But right as we're coming in on final, that pop-up comes up, and I can't control the aircraft when it comes up, and it's so frustrating. I don't know what's going on with this, guys. Yeah, apparently it's just going to continue to plague my life until I lose my mind. So we're not even going to bother turning that data back on. So that way we just don't even get that pop up because every time it just irritates me. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this aircraft started before we kill our battery. Which for any diehard caribou fans out there, I am probably going to butcher the startup sequence. I don't know what I'm doing. I've only started this aircraft up twice now. And I've only flown it once, so we're going to mess some things up, but this is really just a quick look at the aircraft to help anyone out there that might be on the fence about buying it. So the real quick way of getting it started is Battery Master on. Then Master Start goes on. Let's come right up here and click our Magnetos to on as well. So Magnetos are on. Let's bring these props full forward. So they are, and then we'll crack the throttle. That should be good enough right there. Which one thing? Look at the modeling of these wires on the throttle. Looks awesome. And so then come down here, we're going to go ahead and turn the right fuel boost to normal. Then we're going to go right engine start, and then right engine prime. 
And then we'll bring the mixture on the right engine all the way forward. And then let's hop outside real quick and make sure we can get a good view of the left engine when we go and fire that up. That way you guys can see what it looks like on the outside. And then just to make it easier for us to get a good view of what that looks like on the outside. Let's go ahead and push that forward. Normal. Let's see, Prime needs to go over to left. And then we'll hop outside real quick. And there you go. I'll be quiet for a second. And you can hear that the radial engines do actually have a radial engine like sound to them. I don't, I've never heard a caribou in real life. And so I would like to hear a much louder, I guess, meaner, more aggressive sound to it. It just, even though it has that radial engine sound, when I think of radial engine airplanes, I just think of ones that are much louder, kind of meaner sounding, a little bit more throaty, I guess. But overall, I do think the sounds on this are pretty decent. So hopping back into the aircraft, I will go ahead and turn the lights on. So that way you guys can see the exterior lights, which already have our nav and beacons on. And let's go ahead and turn the panel lights on as well. That way we can, when we switch to night mode real quick to show these off, we can just do it all at once. Come on. There we go. Just make everything nice and bright. Okay, so now we will hop outside. That was the wrong one. And so now we can see that our landing lights are on, which if we come and work a little bit of magic here, we can just plop this into the dark hours and see how it looks at night. So with the volumetric prop, we can actually see the blade spinning through, which is cool. We can see how everything kind of looks on the ground. Even this beacon light on the bottom of the aircraft has a reflection, which is real nice as well. And on the back of the propeller, we can also see the landing lights, which is a nice touch. Then hopping into the cockpit, everything's lit up pretty well. And we do have a dome light up here we can operate to really brighten things up. And also the cabin has a light as well. We also have fastened seatbelt signs and no smoking signs. So now we'll pop back in here and we'll go into the daytime because that's more fun to fly and take a look at this airport. We are not using real world weather today just because I already knew I was having internet issues. I didn't want to even attempt to do that. And so now we will flip our generators on so we don't kill our batteries completely. And we are charging, which is good. Your radios are down here. We even have a 430 in the aircraft. Or if you want to do some navigating. I'm not sure if we have autopilot or even how it works. I haven't even tried to mess with it. But here's like your COM1. This should be COM2. You got ADFs up here. And then you do have a transponder, which is already on altitude reporting mode. And then another nice touch we have is right up here where the sun is shining. It shows us our flap configurations for takeoff, approach, and landing based on our weights. And we do get some maneuvering speeds. Also, if we come down here, we can see some flap speeds and cargo door speeds as well. Which we'll go ahead and just go over how the aircraft is loaded so you guys can see. It does seem to have the forward and aft CG right on top of each other. So if you change any of this, it's going to give you an out of CG warning. So something else they also need to work on. So go ahead and do flaps 15. And we'll take the parking brake off. And we're going to destroy this ground equipment as we go and get on our way. Another thing I did want to throw out there is the propeller is actually very well detailed until the engine fires up. And now we look and we pretty much just got a spinning UFO right there. 
And at the proper angle, we can actually see this drive shaft that connects the engine to where the, the hub is. So just some minor things. It looks really good when the engine's off, but just when it's spinning and you take a look, I wish the detailing was a little bit better. And once again, this is the NZA Simulations Christchurch Airport, which if you want to know any of the mods I use in any of my videos, go down to the description. You'll have to click read more, go below the, um, I, I don't know what happened there. Go below the timestamps and I put a link to the payware and freeware mods that I use. If you're ever curious, most of my previous videos are set up that way now. There might be one or two that aren't, but for sure all of the brand new ones are set up that way. Because that is just kind of how I'm doing things. So looking at the NZA airport, we got a real nice looking terminal there. I'm not sure which aircraft come with the airport or which are my AIG traffic. I probably should have turned AIG traffic off so we could see the static aircraft. But that would have required forethought, right? Which this was a very impromptu video. If we take a look at where we came from, there is the cargo terminal. That looks very nice. And we'll do a flyover to get a better look at that. So now we're going to go ahead, hold down the brake, bring manifold pressure up to about 43 where the top of the green arc is. And why is there... Oh. Don't forget control locks. There you go. Control lock is now released. And so now we'll bring the manifold pressure up to the top of the green arc, which looks like it's probably about 45 inches. And we are overspeeding our propeller a little bit. So let's go ahead, bring that back into the green. So we need to bring it back just a little bit more. That will get us pretty close. And then there's manifold pressure in RPM. So now we'll go ahead and start flying. Which we did get flaps 15 in. I'm not sure what our rotation speed is, but it should be pretty early. So there's, oh yeah, real early. We're at right about 50 knots and we're bringing the nose up. And we're airborne right about 60-ish knots, so pretty close to what the Kodiak does. Taking a look over the nose, plenty of room. Now we'll bring the gear up, which that is your gear lever. And we got a nice left turning tendency. So we'll go ahead and just carry that on. Taking a look at the scenery, looks like we got some sheep down there. Conveniently located next to where the fire department does their training. And we'll just kind of fly low and slow so we can check out the airport on this quick hop in the aircraft. Right here, I believe, is Christchurch helicopters. And there should be some helipads, if I remember right. Let's see, it looks like it says aviation. Flying. Oh, it's the New Zealand Flying Doctor Service. That's nice. I'm not sure where Christchurch helicopters are then. This right here is the cargo facility that we left from. So you can kind of get a look at that. Very well detailed, I would say. And then to get a look at the terminal, we'll actually fly out this way and come back in and do it off of our left hand side. But while we're doing that, let's kind of go over how the aircraft feels. So in its current state, it flies, I guess, very easily. For being an aircraft that was developed in 1958, I wish it would have a little bit more of a feeling to it. It, it feels like I can just easily throw it around. So here's full right, and then here's full left. So it just seems very easy to throw around. There's full down, full up. And I feel like for an aircraft built in 1958, it would just feel much heavier on the controls. For our yaw axis, here's full left, and then here's full right. We're just really gonna freak this aircraft out. And I think aircraft like the Kodiak or the PMDG 737, the Phoenix A320, just other payware aircraft have a much better, better feel to them. 
but they also cost significantly more. And so for the $15 price range, it flies very nice. And we have great modeling here in the cockpit. It does fly well. We still have our 15 degrees of flaps in, so we'll go ahead and drop that landing gear. And let's see, what's our speed? We're doing about 100. So we need to bring flaps back a little. I guess we need to slow down a little bit to bring our flaps in. Well, to put our flaps out, not flaps in. So kind of getting it into take, not a takeoff, to a landing configuration to practice a power on stall. Let's just drop those flaps in. It'll figure itself out. So we'll start slowing the aircraft down. And now we will give it some throttle, which will increase our pitch. We'll so it wants to bank to the left as we get slow. It does have a left-hand turning tendency. And then we got our stall horn. We're just going off. Let's bring it up just a little bit more. We're down at right about 40, 30, and now the nose drops. I'm giving it full back pressure, and it stalls pretty well. Then we'll recover, and we're actually going to clean the aircraft up and see how it does in just pretty much a, a clean configuration kind of stall. So we'll turn to our right here. Then we'll level out and we're just gonna pitch up until it stalls with power in and see how it does. So we're, we're losing speed. We're just gonna hold this pitch for 70 knots. And there's the horn, right about 65-ish. It does want to drop the left wing just a little bit, so we'll pull back some more and see what happens. There's 60. And that left wing really dropped that time. So we'll pitch down, get his wings level, and come back on the power. And now we'll go ahead and hook a right-hand turn. The scenery should, in theory, look a little better, but once again, since it streams all of its scenery, and I'm having internet issues, apparently, uh, the scenery is a little bit fuzzy. That's totally something on my end that I don't know how to fix at this point, because whatever the heck is going on with my internet providers. So now we'll start slowing down the, the aircraft. Let's see, it says 165 is our flap. Oh, I guess 105 is our flap limit for 0 to 15. We're going a little faster than that, but that's okay. So we get, we'll go ahead and give it 15 degrees of flaps, just to get us nice and slow as we go over the terminal here. And then we'll go over the terminal, and then we'll bring it into land, because I want to keep this video fairly short for you guys. But I do want to make sure we do the aircraft and the airport at least some kind of justice over time i'm sure we'll do a much more in-depth tour of the airport and the aircraft itself but this i really wanted to get out so that way if there's any of you any of you on the fence about the nza christchurch airport or the i guess the microsoft slash orbix caribou you at least had something out there to look at before you spent your hard-earned money on it which, in American dollars, the Christchurch Airport, I want to say, using PayPal, cost me $26 with current exchange rates at the time of filming. And this aircraft was $14.99. Which, I am self-financed. No one ordered this for me. I did have to spend my own money. And so, there's that disclaimer there. I'm not paid for by anyone. So looking at the airport, we do have some nice hangars, some real nice modeling of just the buildings surrounding the airport. Going to get us a little bit more to the right so then we can bank to the left. We have the US, Antar US Antarctic program right off our left wing and we can see two C-130s and a C-17 down there. Now we got the terminal and what looks like a hotel. It looks very nicely modeled, and taxiing by it earlier, it also looks very, very nice. 
coming up on what looks like the regional ramp. We got some great ground textures, some great looking aircraft. Just overall, really good looking airport. Can't complain at all. Um, I had to buy this airport because I have pretty much every other payware New Zealand airport that's on the market because I do enjoy flying down here. It's a very beautiful place to fly and for the most part it keeps all my flights really short because it's not like America where there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles where you can just fly over nothing. Everything's pretty close together which is nice. We can get some really short flights in like Wellington from here is only 166 nautical miles. Which is really nice. We, I think in this aircraft it would take us an hour to get to Wellington. And so now we'll try and find that runway. Let's see, where's the cargo ramp? There's the, let's see, there's the terminal, there's the runway. Go ahead, drop gear, give it a third notch of flaps. Kind of start slowing the aircraft up. And now we'll give it, we'll just drop in the rest of the flaps. Because if we're just going to ignore the speeds for the rest of the video, we'll do it right now too, just to get us set up for landing. And then you might notice the frames are a little choppy. I don't know if that's the airport or the aircraft. Because I haven't flown this aircraft anywhere except for here. So I'm not sure which one is causing this slight choppiness in frames. Which I think my AIG traffic might have decided it doesn't want to work anymore. So now we'll just give it a nice flare. Just gonna float a little bit. Real nice touchdown sounds. Come back on the yoke. Give her just a little bit of braking. And I'll actually leave those flaps down so I can show you guys the flaps when we park. And then now we'll taxi right on by the terminal and go over to US Antarctic, US Antarctic parking. That way we can get a little bit nicer look at everything that's going on over here from the ground. Which we will go ahead and turn those landing lights to the off position. They do have an IR position, which if we had night vision in the game would be cool to see if that actually works. So looking at the terminal, we have a ton of ground vehicles, which is interesting. Just those little yellow buses, or I guess vans, are just everywhere. But terminal looks great. We can actually see through the windows of the terminal. Got some really nice looking jet bridges. There's a nice little ATR. Another jet bridge there. Gate 21, I, would, I assume, by the numbers painted on it. Looks like we got a 7-8 right here. Once again, we can actually see into the terminal, which is a nice touch. That jet bridge took a second to spawn. Overall, pretty good looking airport. Definitely can't complain. I'm looking forward to actually getting to fly in here when we start doing some more New Zealand flying like we used to do. Considering that air stair is right there, I assume that's a static aircraft that's probably always here. And I don't know what is with all these little vans, and they're just parked everywhere. So, maybe that's something on my end, maybe I need to turn my ground vehicles down. But just know there's a bunch of little yellow buses everywhere. So coming around here, got some A320s. Uh, I th that one looks like a CEO versus I think we might have one or two Neos down here. And we're going to come park over by the, by the C130 so we can get our nice look at the modeling on those. Because those are definitely not my AIG traffic. So the game wants us to park right there, but we're just going to sail right on by so we can come check out this aircraft. Then it kind of gives us a size comparison on how big the caribou is to like a C-130. All 
right, then let's see how, how tight we can turn this. So we don't want to just annihilate this nice C-130. It even looks like a newer one with all those blades on it. And yeah, we'll just park right here. So now that we are stopped, go ahead and turn the parking brake to on. We'll bring the RPMs up just a little bit as we bring this prop back. Feather them. And now we'll go ahead and cut off fuel. And we'll flip the generators to off. And we will kill our battery after start. And I'll go ahead and take a hop out of the aircraft and take a look at everything. So here's the caribou. It actually stopped where we left our nose wheel turn. That's nice. And there it is kind of compared to a C-130. So you can get an idea for what the size of this is. I forgot to go over the detailing on the propeller here. But you can kind of see it. They actually... Put some rust here, which is really nice. And this is, this is where I was talking that when it's spinning, we just seem to lose a lot of this detail. It just looks like a rotating disc. And also you can see how the flaps work on this stole aircraft. So the whole aileron is actually a flap, which is neat. And then even the rear end of this engine folds down too to really help get those stall speeds down to pretty much nothing. And here's kind of what the rear of the aircraft looks like with the flaps down. And there's from up above. So I guess now we should do an overall impressions of the aircraft. Which will get us a nice view here with this C-130 for the cover. That looks pretty good to me. I think we're just a hair not level though. I wish Flight Sim would give us some way to just automatically level this. Because I always have to hit the button about 100 times. But overall impressions. $14.99 on the Microsoft Flight Simulator store for the aircraft. The Christchurch Airport is... I paid $26 and change through PayPal after exchange rates here in America. And the airport, I really like. I definitely would recommend. Um, I'd like, I'm curious to know if it's the aircraft or the airport that causes my frames to stutter, but I'll have to figure that out with time. The aircraft... It is $14.99 once again. With buying anything on the Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace or the in-game store, um, I always believe you should just go directly to the developer. But since this came out with the world update, you do have to get it from Microsoft in the in-game store. At least at, at the time of filming, that is the only way to acquire it. And I, I really wish you could just go direct to Orbix or someone else and purchase it because I, I like to just give my money directly to the developer and I think that's a better way. You get updates faster and I that's just the way I like to do it. I like to cut out the middleman, which is Microsoft. And then when you look at aircraft like the F-15 or F-16, if you buy it in-game, you don't get any of the weapon systems because Microsoft doesn't want to do any of that, which is fine. I'm, I don't play Microsoft, their game, their rules. But I know for Xbox users, you don't have that luxury to say go on Orbix's website or go to DC Designs or Aerosoft, whoever the manufacturer of the mod is, and actually go get, get it straight from the developer. You're stuck getting it in-game. And so overall, for $14.99, if you're into radial engine airplanes, you're looking for a quote-unquote vintage military aircraft, just a really big stole airplane to go fly out into the bush. For $14.99, I think this is a pretty good aircraft. Uh, sounds I wish were a little bit louder, a little bit meaner. But I know when I reviewed the Orbix um, Pacific Aerospace 750, sounds were another issue that I had with that aircraft. So it might just be an Orbix thing, which I might need to take a second look at that because they have updated it since I made that video. But overall... I would say for $14.99, it's a pretty good buy. I'm definitely looking forward to flying it some more. I don't know when I'll get to fly it. I know I'm working on a whole different video right now, and this one just sprung up when I got home from work today, and I wanted to get this put out here. But the cockpit textures are really good. The exterior textures are great. I think the weathering is a little bit over the top in some spots, 
but I'm sure the freeware community will come up with some great liveries over the next couple weeks and months that this aircraft is out. The handling, I do wish the handling felt heavier. Like, the Kodiak feels really great to fly. The PMDG 737 feels good to fly. The Phoenix A320 feels good to fly. Same with the PMDG DC-6. But those are much more expensive aircraft. And for $14.99, it feels good. I just wish it felt more like a 1950s aircraft. It just doesn't feel heavy enough for me. And that's probably my biggest gripe if I had to gripe about anything about the Caribou. is just how it handles. I wish it handled heavier. If that makes any sense at all. Otherwise, the flight deck's modeled awesome. And that's where I'm going to spend most of my time. So I'm very happy with how they modeled that. We do actually have circuit breakers that appear to work. Once again, I haven't tested them out, but they appear to be functioning. And then the cabin. It Overall, the cabin's very nice. We got some low-res textures in there. There's a little bit of weird stuff going on with the ramp in this white, blue, and red paint scheme. I do love the sounds that these doors make, and I just wish the sounds on the engine were a little bit nicer. Overall, though, I know I've said this several times and we're just kind of spinning in a weird circle here. But overall, for $14.99, if this is an aircraft that you're into, whether maybe you're a diehard Caribou fan, maybe you just love radial engines, just want something different than everything else that's out there, because I can't think of another airplane other than maybe the DC-3, but these are still fundamentally different aircraft. This is just something totally different than what else we have in the game, and... I think that's going to appeal to some people. Hopefully this will pop up for um, on air soon. You could start like, you know, your own little cargo airline or something like that and use the caribou. That'd be kind of fun. But with that, I'm going to show you guys the other paint schemes that are available because I don't like how the marketplace does for showing you what liveries you have. So I'm going to show you guys that, but just for in case I didn't say it in that video because I already filmed that one. I just want to say thank you very much for being here. I appreciate all of you guys, and if I helped even one person make a decision about to get this aircraft, this scenery, or download the New Zealand update for the game, which takes up like 15 gigabytes, which is a lot. I hope that I helped at least one person out there, and if I did, that is a successful YouTube video to me. So with that, guys, um, feel free to stick around, feel free to leave. It's just going to be a couple more minutes where I go over deliveries, but I will see you guys in a couple days when my newest video releases. So whenever I buy an aircraft, especially from the Flight Sim Marketplace, I, I never believe that they really give us a good look at what liveries come with the aircraft. They usually give you this little ticker on the bottom that says, oh look, it comes with X many liveries and here are all the options. But I never think we get a great view of what that actually looks like in the game. So I'm going to just swing through all of these real quick. Starting with default, which default looks like pretty much the house color to have to have Lynn paint scheme. Like you'd see on say like the dash seven without actually saying to have Lynn dash four or caribou, whatever you want to put on the side of it. It's just white and red with some gray and a Canadian flag on it. Then we have blue with red stripe. Which isn't a bad looking paint scheme, actually. Got got a real nice deep blue color there. Good reflections coming through the hangar. Oh, looks like we got a silver wingtip. That's a nice touch. Then we got blue with white and red, which I would say out of the default options is probably my favorite one. I, I like this light blue and then the dark blue. And I just like that stripe on the tail. This one's probably my favorite looking out of all of them. And then we got blue with yellow stripe, which for whatever reason just reminds me of the Blue Angels. Probably only because it's blue and yellow. But also not a bad option. And then now for our military friends, or friends that like to fly military flights. We have two camo options. We have the Rattle Can camo. I'm not sure what military this is based off of. Maybe it was based off of like some U.S. military aircraft, say in like Vietnam or something. But we do have camo option with like no markings on it for if you want to just, I guess, fly for any country. 
And then we got Camo 2, which, because of the Army font on the nose, just reminds me of an old U.S. Army aircraft. It's even the right color green. It's got that black right in front of the cockpit windows, and that's very U.S. Army-esque for the time period of the Caribou. And then we got just plain white. But you can't go wrong with white. On the white one, I disagree with how they did some of the weathering, but they do have some really nice weathering on the aircraft as well. So I guess you got to take it or leave it. And I'm sure as this aircraft ages, because it's only been out on the market, I think, for maybe 12 hours at the time of filming. I'm sure as this plane ages, we'll get a lot more great paint schemes. So I hope this helped you guys if you're considering purchasing this aircraft. And let me know what you think, what we could have done better, what we could have done worse. And no matter what, thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if I could have at least helped one of you guys decide about the airport, the airplane, downloading the like 15 gigabyte update that's going to just occupy space on your hard drive. If I at least helped one of you guys, I'd call that mission success. Once again, I appreciate all of you and i hope you guys have fantastic weekends and we will have another brand new video out very soon once again i'm in the process of filming it this came out just wanted to push this guys out to you to try and help someone out there that might want to buy this airport or buy this airplane so i will see you guys probably in a couple days bye now